Okay, so I just want to go ahead and expound on who is Nabayev real quick before we continue. So as we read in uh, the book of Jasher, chapter 47, verse 20, it says, And Nabayev, the son of Ishmael, was then in the land with his children. And Esau went on that day and consulted with him. So we're going to read in Genesis chapter 28, verse 8. Esau then realized how displeasing the Canaanite women were to his father Isaac. So he went to Ishmael and married Mahalath, the sister of Nebaioth, and daughter of Ishmael, son of Abraham, in addition to the wives he already had. Okay? So, you know, Mahalath, this wife that Esau took for himself, was the sister of Nebaioth, the same Nebaioth which he consulted with, all right? Just like, kind of like how Moses, right? He consulted with Jet Jethro or Reuel, you know, because he goes by two names, right? Which was uh, Zipporah's father, right? So basically this is what Esau did, you know, he consulted with his wife's brother, okay? So now, let's go ahead and read to also find out why it says here in Isaiah 46 and 1 Bel bows down Nebo stoops low their idols are born by beasts of burden the images that are carried about are burdensome a burden for the weary so let's read about Mount Nebo so this is from Wikipedia it says Mount Nebo it's an elevated ridge in Jordan, approximately 107, sorry, 817 meters. Mentioned in the Hebrew Bible as the place where Moses was granted a view of the promised land, which is talking about a vision, okay? When it says a view, it says the view from the summit provides a panorama of the holy land and to the north a more limited one of the valley of the river jordan okay so basically you know the most high Yahweh is basically saying that the seers are stooping low okay they can't get no visions just like uh in egypt pharaoh tried to pray to his images and idols for an answer and he did not receive any answer so this is why we read here in Isaiah 47 and 13. All the counsel you have received has only worn you out. Let your astrologers come forward, those stargazers who make predictions month by month. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. You see that? So who is this talking about? That's talking about the wise men of Edom, the people of the clan of Esau, who are basically into divinations, right? And things like that. So this is the reason why, you know, the Most High Yahweh says that these people, they have been doing this since their childhood, okay? Which you have labored at since childhood. So, let's go ahead and continue to read here in Isaiah 47 and 14. Surely they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. They cannot even save themselves from the power of the flame. These are not coals for warmth. This is not a fire to sit by. Why? Because this goes hand in hand with Obadiah chapter 1 verse 18. Where it talks about the remnant of our people. Jacob will be a fire and Joseph a flame. Esau will be stubble. And they will set him on fire and destroy him. There will be no survivors from Esau. Yahweh has spoken. You see that? So it's talking about Esau and his whole clan. Okay? Why? Well, as we bring out many times, it says here in uh, Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2 and 10, you have plotted the ruin of many peoples, shaming your own house and forfeiting your life. You see that? It's the reason why Amalek, the chief house of Esau, <laughs> Most High Yahweh says that they are to be blotted out from under heaven. Okay? The stones of the wall will cry out and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. Which is talking about their idols. 
which they created and decorated. So, Isaiah 47 and 15. That is all they are to you. These you have dealt with and labored with since childhood. All of them go on in their era. There is not one that can save you. Okay? What you guys talking about their idols. So let's go ahead and continue. And let's read in Genesis chapter 25, verse 29. Once, when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country, famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why he is also called Edom. Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. You see that? So, you know, I bring these scriptures out because it goes hand in hand with this here. In Micah chapter 3 verse 5, this is what Yahweh says. As for the prophets who lead my people astray, they proclaim peace if they have something to eat, but prepare to wage war against anyone who refuses to feed them. And this is why it goes hand in hand with this scripture here. Psalms 53 and 4 where it says do all these evildoers know nothing they devour my people as though eating bread they never call on the most high Yahweh okay so this is the reason why Michael 3 and 6 says therefore night will come over you without visions and darkness without divination the sun will set for the prophets and the day will go dark for them. Furthermore, it says the seers will be ashamed and the diviners disgraced. They will all cover their faces because there is no answer from the Most High Yahweh. Okay? But they want to call on the Most High. This is why we're going to read in Psalms 50 and 14. Sacrifice thanks offerings to the Most High for sorry fulfill your vows to the most high Yahweh and call on me in the day of trouble I will deliver you and you will honor me but to the wicked person the most high says what right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips you hate my instruction and cast my words behind you when you see a thief, you join with him. You throw in your lot with adulterers. You use your mouth for evil and harness your tongue to deceit. You sit and testify against your brother and slander your own mother's son. Okay? These are the things that Esau have done. It says, when you did these things and I kept silent, you thought I was exactly like you. But I now arraign you and set my accusations before you. And now let's read. In Ezekiel 32 and 18. Son of man, well for the hordes of Egypt and consign to the earth below both her and the daughters of mighty nations along with those who go to the pit. Which again, it's talking about all of these nations that go hand in hand with Esau, okay? As we read in Psalms, Esau throws in his lot with adulterers. You see that? This is the reason why it says this here. Let's go ahead and show you this. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start off. In Obadiah chapter 1 verse 10, 
because of the violence against your brother Jacob, you will be covered with shame. You will be destroyed forever. On the day you stood aloof while strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Yahweh Washlam, you were like one of them. You see that? He throws in his lot with adulterers. Okay, again, it's the reason why they have their own so-called Holy Roman Empire, right? It's the reason why this kingdom here, America, follows the ways of Rome, of Egypt, of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Of all these wicked nations that did not revere the name of the Most High. And this is the reason why all those same wicked nations got destroyed, right? Ancient Babylon, Persia, Greece, you name it. So this is why the Most High Yahweh says that these people here, you know, they're proud, they're arrogant. They think because they got their kingdom and their establishment and their corporations running that everything is so fine and dandy with God. All right. So the Most High Yahweh says that you were like one of them, just like we read. All right. Just like we read in Psalms 50 and 21. When you did these things and I kept silent, you thought. See that? That's the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that your thoughts are not his thoughts. Your ways are not his ways. You thought I was exactly like you. But I now arraign you and set my accusations before you. See why the Most High Yahweh says, you know, that uh, haughtiness comes before a fall. So this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh let this happen. You know, he let these people continue to be proud, arrogant, evil, let them do what they want because their day was going to come. And it is coming. All right, that's the reason why they're scared. That's the reason why they want to terrify you with their lies. Because they're trying to take you down with them, all right? They know that their kingdom is crumbling apart. They know that this is the end of their kingdom, right? The apocalypse to reveal, to expose their lies. They don't want that, of course not, because they made a fortune from extortion. So they're trying to cover up their lies, right? They don't want to take you people down with them. But the Most High Yahweh says that his elect ones, right? You will not deceive, right? The people that he has put his spirit on, his words on, right? You will not be able to try to bring down with you. Because these are the times the Most High Yahweh says that you're going to be cast down to the pit. So let's continue now in Ezekiel 32 and 18 again. Son of man, well for the hordes of Egypt, right? Which is talking about Gog and his hordes, Azazel and his hosts. Well for the hordes of Egypt and consigned to the earth below, both her and the daughters of mighty nations, along with those who go down to the pit. Say to them, are you more favored than others? Go down and be laid among the uncircumcised. They will fall among those killed by the sword. The sword is drawn. Let her be dragged off with her hordes. Which is a precept to the scripture here. Ezekiel 38 and 21, a prophecy against God. I will summon a sword against Gog on all my mountains, declares the sovereign Yahweh. Every man's sword will be against his brother. You see that? What is that talking about? Well, that's talking about these people fighting amongst each other, right? For their religion. Oh, my religion is better than yours, right? My religion is more real than yours. Not knowing that it's all fake. They all have basically established those religions by lies and by killing off people, right? By bloodshed. That's how their cities and their religions were established. So, you know, this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that uh, the sword is drawn. Let her be dragged off with all her hordes. From within the realm of the dead, the mighty leaders will say of Egypt and her allies, they have come down. And they lie with the uncircumcised, with those killed by the sword. Assyria is there with her whole army. She is surrounded by the graves of all her slain, all who have fallen by the sword. Their graves are in the depths of the pit, and her army lies around her grave. All who have spread terror in the land of the living, sorry, in the land of the living are slain fallen by the sword Elam is there with all her hordes around her grave all of them are slain 
fallen by the sword, or who had spread terror in the land of the living, went down uncircumcised to the earth below. They bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. A bed is made for her among the slain, with all her hordes around her grave. All of them are uncircumcised, killed by the sword, because their terror has spread in the land of the living. They bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. They are laid among the slain. Meshach and Tubal are there, with all their hordes around their grave. All of them are uncircumcised, killed by the sword, because they spread their terror in the land of the living. But they do not lie with the fallen warriors of old, who went down to the realm of the dead with their weapons of war, their swords placed under their heads, and their shields resting on their bones, though these warriors also had terrorized the land of the living. You too, Pharaoh, will be broken and will lie among the uncircumcised with those killed by the sword. And here's the key point. Here's the cherry on top. Edom is there. Her kings and all her princes, despite their power, they are laid with those killed by the sword. They lie with the uncircumcised, with those who go down to the pit. So, you know, why does it say here, despite all their power? Because, as we uh, read in the previous part of this video, in the book of Jasher, chapter 47, verse 6, this was one of Esau's blessing. And Isaac also blessed the sons of Esau, saying, May the Most High cause you to be a dread and a terror to all that will behold you and to all your enemies. All right? So, you know, pretty much, it's the reason why the Most High told us about Esau, the mighty hunter, okay, and how he was going to be dwelling on high in Assyria. He was going to be throwing his lots with adulterers. Joshua 24 and 4. And to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau. But Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Now let's read in Numbers chapter 22 verse 1. The Yasharales traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across from Jericho. Now, Balak, son of Zippor, saw all that Yashara had done to the Amorites, and Moab was terrified because there were so many people. Indeed, Moab was filled with dread because of the Yasharalites. The Moabites said to the elders of Midian, this horde is going to lick up everything around us, as an ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balak, son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at sorry, who was king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to summon Balaam, son of Beor, who was at Pethro, near the Euphrates River, in his native land. Balak said, A people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the land and have settled next to me. Now come and put a curse on these people because they are too powerful for me. Perhaps then I will be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that whoever you bless is blessed and whoever you curse is cursed. The elders of Moab and Midian left, taking with them the fee for divination. So this is the whole key point of this scripture here. All right, so these people here, you know, the Midianites, they were into, uh, you know, divination and sorcery. It says, when they came to Balaam, Balaam, sorry, they told him what Balak had said. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick read here from uh, gotquestions.org. And it says, who were the Midianites? So we don't got much time left in this part of the video. We're going to go right to it, and we're going to read. It says, they settled in the land of the east. Okay? This is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says this here in Isaiah 8 and 19. When someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? 